Hey, I just want to say thanks for leaving such positive feedback on my last video. If you haven't checked it out, go ahead and check it out right here. Thanks for letting me know that that hit home for some of you. If you've been watching my videos, you know I always try to keep things on the up and up with you. I never try to glamorize any part of this whole process. Yeah, some of it is cool, but also a lot of it is very tough and stressful and even unhealthy sometimes. <laughs> How's it gonna help you if I were to be like, oh yeah, you know, today I'm gonna read this chapter and then we went to class and then I'm gonna do 5,000 Anki cars. And so <laughs> those of you who left those comments, thanks for letting me know that I, I helped you because that helps me even more. So I appreciate that. My last video was more about the mental game behind starting residency. But for this video, if I could go back one year in time and talk to myself from a year ago, these are the things that I would tell myself to do to prepare for my intern year. So number one, <laughs> uh, know how to do a good patient presentation. This is really tough for me in the beginning. Do it to the point where you have that that skeleton or that that outline of a patient presentation just burned into your head second thing physical exams i'm not going to go into it too much but just be comfortable with it because it will make you appear more seasoned in a hospital not only when you're interacting with your patients but also when you are doing it in front of your team before i go on to the next thing so somebody told me in like my very first week that it's hard for an attending to change their impression of you that they form within the first few days of meeting you. That's why I'm kind of warning you, just just start off strong so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And your attendings, your attendings gossip, your your hospital gossips, your attendings also gossip. So don't give them any, any ammo to use against you, all right? You know what I mean? Just only leave them with good things to say. So treat everybody with respect from the CEO all the way down to the janitor. That is a good way to carry yourself in the hospital. Always be professional. And number three, here's where I might lose some of y'all, but trust me, I really wish when I started out, I really wish I took the time to reread my first aid book. Yep, you heard me, I'm not joking. Of course, not everything that's in the book is gonna be something that you see on a daily basis. It's more for the purpose of trying to repay that foundation that you had around the time you were taking your step one. I'm sure this might resonate with some of y'all, but like for me personally, I never felt smarter than the day before I took my my step one exam. I knew this was the smartest I'm ever going to be. <laughs> there was like true understanding of the material at that point. Like knowing the pathophysiology behind a lot of diseases can really help you out, especially when you're when you're talking things through with your team, when your attending is asking you a bunch of questions. If you got that pathophysiology under your belt, it just helps you out a lot. Even when you're starting medications, you can justify starting a lot of these medications just by knowing the pathophysiology behind these diseases. Yeah, of course, you don't need to know like the embryology, histology, all that stuff. Go ahead, skip over that. Use your better judgment and try to just pick out the more high yield stuff. Side effects of medications, complications, associated diseases, and all that stuff. It just really helps you restructure. Because honestly, when you get to my point, all of it is a distant memory. It's, it's like, oh yeah, I remember reading about this, but... You know, does that ever happen to you? You're like, oh yeah, I remember reading about that, but how did that go? Did it go this way or this causes that? You know, you don't want to be doing that in residency, especially when you're actively talking about these subjects. If you can even flex some of that knowledge that you have, it's going to come across really well. Your attendings will be like, all right, all right. You know, this person knows what he's talking about. You get pimped on a lot of this stuff. If I could go back in time, that would be the first thing I'd do. I would read that first aid book. Next thing. All right, same thing with the first aid book. I would actually rewatch sketchy videos. I'm talking about sketchy pharmacology. Maybe if you want to do micro, I don't really know. But pharmacology first off, I think that's very helpful. Remembering all those broad general drug classifications, all the medications that go under each category of medication. You know what I mean? Even more so for side effects. Those those are really big pimping points in the hospital. Even myself, I've been rewatching sketchy videos on my downtime and they're very helpful. It helped me the very next day that I started doing it. So I was like, all right. I think that's like the most valuable thing you could do with your time because it's passive and that stuff sticks with you. Hold on. So I was in the middle of editing this video and Dr. High Yield just comes out of nowhere and drops a banger of a video. I'm not saying that lightly. I just watched it and I was I was blown away. It complete it blows my video. It blows this video completely out of the water. So don't even watch my video. Go watch his video instead. I'm gonna link it below. It's just more concise. Exactly as his prep videos were. <laughs> it's just concise exactly what you need to know. It's like 10 pearls that you should know for intern year. And I agree with every single point that he makes. I wish that video was out a year ago when I first started. Every Everything from being honest, being efficient, coming in a little bit earlier in your first couple of weeks, just so you're not running around like a, like a chicken with your head cut off. Treating people with respect, always asking for help, knowing what you should prioritize throughout the day, knowing what takes top priority that you need to get done first thing in the morning, like orders, medications, discharges, consults, versus writing notes and doing all that other stuff. You know, at the end of the day, a lot of this just comes with time. But yeah, yeah, the more, the more that you're actively thinking about that before you even step inside a hospital, I think that'll do you very good. It, it all really 
really comes down to efficiency. How fast can you find that that system that works for you, that keeps you on top of it, keeps you accountable, make sure you, you don't forget anything throughout the day, you know? Don't worry, if it's in the first couple of weeks, first couple of months, and you still don't have a system, that's fine, it's gonna take a while. Sometimes I still feel like I don't have a system. I'm just kind of making it work as I go along, but I'm, I'm sure there's a system in my head some somehow, you know? I, I must be doing it, but I, I'm just not really aware of it, so yeah. Go check it out. Next thing, just to round it off, um, EKGs. I, I can't help you with EKGs. I still sweat to this day when it comes to EKGs. There, there are some good resources out there like lifeinthefastlane.com or .org. Um, just Google it. But that's a good resource. It has a nice breakdown and very searchable too. Go ahead, watch YouTube videos, try to brush up on that stuff. But don't just watch it passively, practice it. If you're able to use those 10 steps to approaching an EKG, I think that would be a very good starting point on your very first day of residency. If you could do that comfortably, then you could just build on top of that from there on out. All right. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing this on purpose, but every time I start editing, I, I think of something else. I'm like, oh, I, I really want to say that. So my bad for delaying this damn video. One of the most helpful things. It's, it's a simple trick, but it, it really changes your workflow. During your morning rounds, when you get a list of things to do for every single patient that you're carrying, just making simple check boxes, little tiny box, instead of bullet points, just make little boxes and then write whatever you have to do, like start this medication or consult this person or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, just making those little check boxes so that you could check it off as soon as you complete it. As soon as I started doing that, I never forgot to do a single thing. I became reliable. It's so simple. And you'd be like, no, nah, this is stupid. I promise you, instead of bullet points, just make check boxes. It'll change your entire workflow. So try it out. See if you like it. Let me just make sure there's nothing else I could think of. All right, now I'm done. I think. <laughs> so these are just some of the things that I wish somebody told me before starting residency in order to be a little more prepared on my very first day. However, if you don't do anything to prepare for your first day, that's totally fine. I didn't prepare at all, but it's a year later and I still have these regrets to this day. So what does that tell you? <laughs> but either way, you'll probably be okay. It just might be a little harder, but I hope this helps. Go get busy and good luck. I really, I'm rooting for you. I'm proud of you for making it this far. You made it past term one. You made it past step one. You can make it past year one of residency so go change the world yeah that was corny yeah my bad <laughs> all right i'll try again next time i gotta go take a shower as always i love y'all thanks for always checking out my videos taking the time out leaving comments or whatnot if you made it this far i appreciate you even more when i was in med school i always hated when people would say you got this like you're going in and taking an exam and they would always say you got this and that always rubbed me the wrong way because i never felt like i had it i never had it in the first place so no i don't got this <laughs> Uh, so that's why I never say you got this. But I believe in you, and I know you'll give it your best shot. And that's all anybody could ever ask of you.